Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to configure EIGRP load balancing. Now as a quick refresher, load balancing is simply the ability to send traffic over multiple paths to the same destination. Now OSPF supports load balancing and EIGRP is the same. It supports load balancing as well, by default. There are a few more similarities between OSPF and EIGRP when we talk about load balancing. Another one is EIGRP defaults to four, so it will support four equal cost paths by default. And we can use the maximum paths command with EIGRP to, uh, to extend that up to 16 different paths at the same time, all within equal cost. If you haven't yet checked out the OSPF tutorial on load balancing, do so because there we get into the details of using the maximum paths command. Okay, so there are a lot of similarities between these two protocols with load balancing. However, there's one major difference, and this is it here. EIGRP can not only load balance equal cost paths, it can also load balance routes with unequal metrics. Now, OSPF was limited to equal cost load balancing. In other words, two routes had to have the same cost in order for OSPF to balance traffic between them. With EIGRP, we've got some leeway, and if we have two routes that are, I guess you could say, similar in their metrics, then we can configure EIGRP to balance between them. And so that's what we're going to focus on in this tutorial. Now, in order for this to work, we have to tell the router what metric is acceptable. How, how close do the metrics have to be in order for the router to load balance between them? How similar do they have to be? And this brings us to the idea of variance. Now the command we're going to use is the variance command. And it has a single parameter. And this is known as the multiplier. It's a numeric value. By default, the multiplier has a value of 1. And so when we configure this, the way it works is we take the feasible distance, in other words, the metric of the best EIGRP route, and we multiply it by the variance. And the rule is, any feasible successor has to be less than or equal to that new value in order to be considered a candidate for load balancing. Okay? So let's look at, a, at an example. Let's say our feasible distance is 25. And if we want to first start with the default value, which is 1, 25 times 1 equals 25, obviously. And then, so this is the value. This is the value that our feasible successors have to be less than or equal to. Well, here are our two feasible successors, and you can see right away their metrics are higher than 25. So by default, EIGRP is not going to load balance between these three routes. In fact, by default, EIGRP will only load balance between equal cost paths because it has to equal the feasible distance because all we're doing is multiplying by 1. So let's make a change. Let's not use the default value. And instead, the multiplier, let's make it a value of 2. So now when we multiply 25 times 2, we get 50. So this is the new value. And we have to compare each feasible successor to this new value. And right away, you can see the first route, which has a value of 40, is now less than 50. So EIGRP would go ahead and load balance between uh, its best route, which has the feasible distance, and the feasible successor. This route here, which is also a feasible successor, still has a value which is higher than our new sum of 50. So that route would not be included in the load balancing. Okay, so that's the basic approach we're taking. We can put any value we want to in the multiplier between 1 and 128. That's the range we can use. So you can see we can, we can really extend the, uh, the range to make it uh, really inclusive of many routes if we wanted to. In our lab, we're going to be logging into router A which has a connection to both router B and C and these are EIGRP neighbors to router A and they're each advertising a route to the 192.168.2.0 network it's a slash 24 
Now by default, router A chooses router C, and we'll see the differences in the metrics in the EIGRP topology table in just a minute. What we're going to do is we're going to play around with the variance command until we can get router A to load balance between both of these links, even though in this case they are drastically different in terms of their bandwidth, just to illustrate how this works. Now before we make any configuration changes, let's take a look around. First, I want to see what's in the route table. And you can see we have one EIGRP route, the 192.168.2.0 slash 24, and that is from router C on the fast ethernet link. Okay, so that's to be expected. Now let's take a look at the EIGRP topology table. Also to be expected, we see two routes in here, not only router C, but router B via our serial connection. And you can see the two metrics on the routes are drastically different. Router C is much lower because it's, it has a much higher bandwidth link connected uh, for that particular segment. Okay, so the question we need to ask ourselves is, what multiplier value do we need to use in order to create a new value that 2306560, the metric for router B's route, will be less than or equal to it. I think five times the 409600 would be a little low. I think six is going to be just right. Now there's one thing to keep in mind here. Only feasible successors and successors are eligible for load balancing. So let's say we learned this route, the 192.168, from five other routers but they did not pass the feasibility condition, remember that? Well, then they are not eligible to be load balanced. And it doesn't matter what your variance multiplier is. It doesn't matter if eventually they all fall with, you know, under that particular new value of the variance. Doesn't matter. Okay, so remember that rule. Only successors and feasible successors are eligible for load balancing. Now with this command, the show IP EIGRP topology, we only see successors and feasible successors. If you want to see all routes in the EIGRP route table, just add the all links parameter to the end of this command. I can enter it, but we're not going to see any difference here because I don't have any other routes. Now, one more command to show you. Show IP protocols. This tells us a lot of useful information about all the routing protocols running on this router. We can see we have EIGRP on the top and OSPF on the bottom. I'm only going to point out what's relevant to this tutorial, but when you have a chance, take a look at this command. It's ex extremely useful. Now here, this line, the EIGRP maximum metric variance equals 1. So we're just confirming that the default value of the variance multiplier is 1. Okay, so now on to the configuration command. We have to go into EIGRP and issue the variance command. I'll show you the parameter. Again, it's a value between 1 and 128. We will use 6. And first, let's take a look at the show IP protocols again. And you can see here our new variance multiplier value. All right. Now, let's take a look at our IP route table. And there we have it. Now we have the route not only from router C, but from router B in the route table. So the router is now going to load balance between these two links. Okay, so the variance command worked for us, and we're now load balancing. If you're wondering how the router is going to load balance, does it send it all to A, uh, rather router B, then to router C, or does it split it equally? Well, the answer is Cisco calls it intelligent load balancing. And what that means is there are a couple different options to choose from between how the router is going to send traffic on each of the links to router B and to router C. One option would be to make it a 50-50 split, so it's an equal distribution. Or you can do something like, let's say the link to router C, since it is a fast Ethernet, we can send that the majority. Let's say 75% of the traffic and only 25% goes on the serial link. We could do something similar to that line of thought as well. There are options. A lot of the details of that are outside of the scope. I just wanted to mention it, though, so that you have some, some idea of uh, the actual implementation of the load balancing itself. 
Okay, let's go ahead and summarize what we covered. We now know that EIGRP can support not only equal cost load balancing, but also unequal cost load balancing, which is pretty cool. We can enable this by using the variance command, and by default that multiplier value is 1. Now the router treats this by issuing this particular formula, the feasible distance times the variance multiplier, and that gives us our new sum, and then all of the feasible successors have to be equal to that new sum or less than it in order to be eligible uh, for load balancing. And then just keep in mind that before you even get to that point, only your successor routes and your feasible successor routes are eligible to be load balanced in the first place. All the other routes that don't meet the feasibility condition are not candidates. Okay? And so that's it. That is how we configure EIGRP load balancing. Thanks for watching.